There we go. So I wanted to let you see the check in here because I wanted us to talk about it. Um, this week is going to be us getting into what school should look like. So virtual school is going to start to look a lot more similar to how you would look in normal school uh, or in traditional school because some of you will be going back to your home schools on January 22nd. So I wanted to make sure you are aware of the plan for the week. Um, the biggest thing you're going to see is that deadlines are going to be a lot shorter. That means you won't have a week to get an assignment done. After this week, you're going to only have a couple of days to get an assignment done. Because in normal school, when you start getting homework, it's due the next day. And so we're going to start getting back into the swing of doing more normal things. So on uh, Monday, we're going to be reviewing energy um, transformations and electric circuits. I haven't seen you guys face to face since Tuesday. So we're going to review that a little bit. Um, then we're going to start introducing electromagnets, OK? Tuesday, we're going to review electromagnets, how they're used, how they can become stronger. We are all. And so Tuesday, we'll be talking about electromagnets. Wednesday, we're going to introduce generators. And Thursday, notice we'll have class Thursday because I've not seen you guys in so long. Thursday, we're going to continue learning about generators and possibly introduce simple electric motors. So you'll see the reason why my lights are out is because LBC, where I am, had a fire drill and I didn't want to leave the classroom. So um, what we see here is we're going to be working um, this week to make sure we're understanding how energy is still being transformed, but now in an electromagnet, in a generator, and in a simple electric motor. You're going to have assignments on Schoology, and I'm going to open them up to your class as soon as class is over today at 848, and so that you can start working on those. Remember, science time doesn't end until 926. So we have live instruction from 810 usually until 848. And from 848 till 926, you should be working on science schoology assignments. OK. Now, let's go ahead and get started with our day. In our notes, if you could please write at the top, investigating electromagnets. Please write what you see there in white. Investigating electromagnets. <laughs> Investigating electromagnets. You do not have to write what's in green there, but this is our learning objective. This is what you'll be seeing when you go back to school. If some of you go back to school and don't stay with me for the rest of the school year, you're going to see a green um, learning objective. I will develop and use a model that explains how magnetic fields produced by electricity flow within a circuit. So we're going to start talking about the lovely marriage of magnets and electricity. What happens when I combine both of those? In short, power. Yes, power happens. We remember when we learned about when we learned about magnets since kindergarten in science, we were able to see we were able to see that a magnet, please write down what you see here in green, an electromagnet is a type of magnet that uses electricity to produce a stronger magnetic field. Yes, you want to write down what you see there in white as well. So we've always known of magnets. Wiley Coyote, like we see here, is using a magnet. He's attracting something he didn't think he'd get. OK, that bomb. But what we see here is this is a magnet, a magnet we've learned about forever and ever. Amen. But now we're going to start learning about what happens when I add electricity to that magnet. So what you'll see here is you see those squiggly little white lines there? 
those squiggly little white lines there that are pulling that bomb to Wiley's um, magnet is called a magnetic field. Now, in this cartoon, we see that magnetic field through squiggly white lines, but in real life, a magnetic field is invisible. We only know a magnetic field is there when a magnet attracts another magnet to it. Go ahead and write this down, please. You do not need to draw the picture and you do not um, need to write magnetic field yet. You just need to write what we see here in green and in white. What a magnetic field is. Miss Neville's about to go on. Remember this lesson is being recorded. So if Miss Neville ever goes too fast for you, all you have to do, all you have to do is watch this video and I'll make it available to you at 926 today. Okay, so our next big bolded um, part of our notes is understanding magnets. If you want to run away real quickly and go get some um, colored pencils or crayons, it may be well, maybe good for you. You'll specifically need a blue and red crayon or colored pencil. We're going to start reminding ourselves that magnets have poles. They have a North Pole and a South Pole. We'll want to draw both of these pictures and pay attention closely to the letters we see on these magnets. We want to notice that like poles repel, like poles repel, and opposite poles attract. They come together. So what we see here is both of these pictures, we see both of these magnets repelling one another. OK, because their poles are the same. When we say like poles, I'm saying poles that are the same. So two North Poles will push apart, two South Poles will push apart, but a North and South Pole will definitely come together. OK, please make sure you write down here what's in green and white and you'll want to draw a picture of. Draw one picture of poles attracting, north and south poles attracting, and one picture of north and north poles repelling or pushing apart. If you didn't remember what attracting or repelling meant, it may be a good idea for you to underline the words attract and repel and circle the definitions that Ms. Neville's written beside them. Please go ahead and get this done now. Ms. Neville's going to take five minutes, but remember, um, while you're working on this, if you don't get to finish your pictures, you will have plenty of time to get it done because you're going to be able to get any notes that you missed, okay?
Miss Neville, you're muted. Tristan, I should have been able to reshare the and see it hopefully now. I can see it now. You can? Yes, ma'am. Good. What is a Z for? Say it again, Journey. What is a Z for? I can't hear you, Journey. Say it one more time. What is a Z for? There's the Z. That's a North. A N. Good question. All right, guys, Ms. Neville's about to go on. Remember, if you didn't finish drawing your pictures, you will see this again very soon, okay? So in electromagnet, we're gonna write this down and we're gonna be drawing this picture. Um, I apologize if I'm going fast. An electromagnet is electricity plus magnetism. It's the marriage of both of them. An electromagnet has three important parts. Just like with a conductor, with a, I mean, with an electric circuit, an electromagnet will have a power source. In this case, the power source is a battery. An electromagnet will have a conductor, just like we would in a circuit. But we notice that that copper wire, that conductor, is wrapped around something called an iron core. This iron core is magnetic by itself. It can attract a little bit of stuff. It's not a very strong magnet, but it's a magnet. When I attach a power source through a conductor, energy from that power source is transformed. It's carried through that conductor to that electromagnet. So if my invisible magnetic field was this big before it attracted electricity, now it's this big. Yes, it makes that iron core a stronger magnet. It makes that iron core a stronger, a stronger magnet by increasing that invisible magnetic field, increasing the size of that invisible magnetic field. Please take some time to draw this picture, label it, and make sure you've written what we see here in green. Emma, go ahead and unmute yourself and tell us what you need. I was just about to ask, do we have to draw the picture? You do.
it may be helpful for you to make sure that you tell us that you're in your notes that that power source in this picture is a battery and that iron core is an iron nail. Ms. Neville's about to go on. So when we're talking about how, what we can do when we're talking about what we can do to make an electromagnet um, more powerful, there's a couple of things we can do. You do not have to draw these pictures, but you do need to write what you see here in green and white. So when we're talking about what we can do to make an electromagnet more powerful, or in other words, increase the size of that invisible magnetic field, it's important for us to know there are two really big things we can do here. One, we can increase the size of the power source. Yeah, instead of me using that AAA battery to power my electromagnet, I can use this large battery to power my electromagnet. It's going to, because there's more chemical energy here, because it's a larger battery, it's going to carry more um, electricity to that, uh, that magnet and make it that much more powerful. That will be one way that we can increase um, the power of an electromagnet. Another way is to increase the number of loops or coils around that iron core. Let me go back real quickly. If I were to, well, I'll go back in a minute. If I were to add more loops, if I were to wrap more coils around that nail, that's going to make my iron core more powerful. That's going to make it more magnetic. That's going to make its magnetic field that much more powerful. OK, the more I loop, for example, this electromagnet with 200 loops wrapped around it is going to be much more powerful, going to have a much larger magnetic field than this one with only 50 loops. So increasing the number of loops or coils of copper wire around that iron core will also make it more powerful. Once again, you do not have to draw the pictures here. You just need to write what you see in green and white. Yes. 
Miss Neville, you're muted. Hey. Miss Neville, you're muted. Nobody can hear you. Oh, thank you. Sorry. So what we see here is a GIF where when I turn that um, this electric circuit, which is what it is, when I turn that electricity on, when I flip that switch, when that red light turns red, it attracts paper clips to this iron cord that's wrapped in copper wire. When we're looking at the energy transformations that we see here, please write down what you see here in green. You do not have to draw the picture. We see, guys, turn on your mic and let me know what kind of energy is inside of that battery. Chemical energy. Chemical. Chemical energy. Chemical. So we're going to see chemical, chemical energy. Chemical energy is then going to flow through this copper wire. What kind of energy flows through a conductor? Electrical. Electrical energy. And then when those pieces of metal attract to this large piece of metal, this is a new kind of energy. What energy do you think that would be? Electromagnetic. Magnetic energy. Very good. So this is the energy transformation that we see here. Remember? The first to go into that first blank is going to be this producing energy, okay? Then what does it transform into? It transforms into electrical and then into magnetic. Once again, you do not need to draw the picture here. You just need to write what you see in green and white. Good job, Emma. Ms. Neville's about to go on. So let's talk about what we're going to be doing during class today. Let's talk about what we're going to be doing when Ms. Neville lets us go today. What I want you to do is while you're waiting, please go to your Schoology. Click on our science class. And the two assignments that you're going to be working on or the assignment that you're going to be working on today is the, these notes. I want to give you these notes again along with a virtual lab. Let me share my screen with you. I still have the same stuff. Journey, please mute yourself and don't unmute yourself again until Miss Neville tells you to. OK, so we're at our science page. Miss Neville's now going to publish that yellow folder there. And it's going to be a yellow folder that we're working out of electromagnets, generators, and simple electric motors. And when I click on that yellow folder, what I'll be working on today what I'll be working on today is the building an electromagnet virtual lab and investigating electromagnets. This is the recorded lesson that we just watched. I've already created one with the same PowerPoint that you can go through and watch on your own and complete some questions afterwards. Now, I need everyone paying attention here so Ms. Neville can show you how to complete the virtual lab. So I'm going to click on the link for my virtual lab. Uh-oh. 
And you're going to see something that says click here to build a virtual electric, uh, a virtual electromagnet. Here's what you need to do. Are you paying attention? Emma, I want you paying attention to me. When you go to click on that blue link where it says click here to build a virtual electromagnet. Let me see if you'll do it. There we go. When you get here, you're going to right click it with the right button of your mouse. You're going to right click it and you're going to tell it to open a link in a new tab. You're going to right click it. You don't want to click it with the left button because it's not going to take you to it. See, you want to right click it. And click open link in new tab. With the right side of my mouse. Open link in new tab and when you do that. It's coming. You're going to enable your um, Adobe Flash Player, just like you see Miss Neville doing. I'm saying allow. Give it a second. And you're going to start your game. This is where you'll follow some directions here. You're going to experiment with adding loops. This is called a switch. You're going to turn that switch on or off, and you're going to be able to see how many paper clips your iron core can pick up based on how many coils you add, okay? Once you're done with that, you're gonna come back to Schoology, click Start New Attempt. You'll notice, Emma, take a seat please and listen. You'll notice that you only have two attempts now. No longer do we have three. You now only have two attempts because when we get back to traditional school, you'll only have one attempt. So you'll have two attempts to answer your questions. Okay. And I think there are four questions here. You'll answer those and you will get a grade. To my knowledge, this is not a teacher graded assignment. Okay. If you have any questions, please email me. The assignments are available now. Do I have anyone who has any questions? No, unmute yourself. Do you have your hand up, Marley? Go ahead and unmute yourself and tell us what you need. 